C-Tools allow communities to study their local air quality via an intuitive web-based framework. This video series will help familiarize users with how the system works and how to run a variety of scenarios. Our tutorials use C-Port, but C-Line works the same way. Tutorial 2, Changing Meteorology. Emissions calculations and dispersion modeling depend a great deal upon the meteorology used for the simulation. C-Tools allows the user to model short-term concentrations by using meteorological averages for several key parameters for five different stability classes and four different times during the day in both the summer and winter seasons. C-Tools also can model annual averages. Let's see how changing meteorology impacts NOx concentrations in a residential area near the Wanda Welch Terminal in Charleston. Let's first pan and zoom in on the Wanda Welch Terminal. Remember that our modeling domain will correspond to our viewing window. Notice that much of the area to the southeast of the terminal is residential. We'll open up the Perform Analysis tab and name our model run Wando Baseline Knox. Let's leave Representative Short-Term Concentration checked, but notice that we have the option here of calculating annual averages. Let's run neutral conditions in the winter with seasonal average winds for all sources for a weekday afternoon. Once you are sure you have your parameters correct, you can click the Start Model Run button. While we're here, we can submit a second run for convective conditions so that we can see how concentrations change with different atmospheric stability classes. Short-term model runs will take a couple of minutes, depending on the number of sources in your modeling domain. Annual average runs take longer, as the system runs over 100 scenarios to represent the changing conditions over the course of a year. You can check on the status of your run by clicking on the folder icon. Hit the refresh button to watch the progress of your model run. Your run will be ready for viewing once the status changes to completed. Notice that completed is hyperlinked. If you click this link it will bring up a pop-up window that lets you know that there were no rail sources in your domain even though you asked it to run for rail lines. Clicking the icon with the eye will overlay the concentrations on top of your base map. Notice the strong contribution of hoteling ships. If you click on the large eye icon on the left side of the page, it will bring up some visualization options. Inspect mode allows you to click on any area on the map and see the concentration predicted, as well as the contribution percentages from each of the sources. The census block overlay redraws the concentration output as averages by census block group. By the way, this overlay is included as both a shapefile and a KML in the gzipped file archive that you can download from the View Results tab. The archive also includes CSVs with concentrations at all XY receptor locations. After your second model run, the one with convective conditions, has completed, you can bring up those results. You'll notice right away that the plume is dispersed more. To get a better sense of what the differences are, you can run a comparison analysis. Open up the View Results menu, then click on the Comparisons tab. You can create comparisons of raw difference or relative differences between the two. I'll submit a raw difference comparison scenario, comparing the convective run with the run that used neutral conditions. Once you bring those results up, you'll see that in general, convective conditions led to higher concentrations throughout the domain, except that the plume from our point source was not as extreme. That's it for Tutorial 2. Watch tutorial 3 to see how to add new sources.